So while it was a tank fest, a question which is quite recurring came up again. Why half tracks in the first place? And the second question related to this, why did half tracks basically disappear after the second world war, at least in production? This particular question was be started because there was a movement of vehicles and there was a half track in the beginning and then later on were post-war vehicles and basically there was no half track anymore. So they changed quite a lot and you will see the footage of course here. So what is the reason for this that we see half tracks initially but then they basically disappear so they're mainly there for the second world war and then of course the surplus vehicles are still used but they are not produced anymore. So why half tracks in the first place anyway? Now one initial important part was the realization of the British after the first world war. They looked at it and saw okay the speed of the attack of the tanks is determined by the accompanying infantry. And this is due to the fact that even if the tanks break through they are mainly helpless without infantry to spot anti-tank weapons to defend them against infantry attacks or anything if the defenders are sophisticated. Now let's move forward a bit. If we look at the German Panzer Division, one of the key ideas was that every weapon system is at least as fast as the tank. So that the tank is the main weapon, whereas all the supportive units like infantry, artillery have the same speed. So that on the operational level, it's fast enough. And so the infantry has to keep up. So the first version, of course, was motorized infantry. Infantry in trucks. But there's a major problem here. Infantry in trucks isn't particularly well in cross country. So, and also it's not armored. So you have the problem, the tanks, and then your infantry runs with them. So again, the tanks either have to slow down, which, and since the mobility and the speed of the tank is also kind of a defense for it, it weakens the weapon system or the infantry runs all the time and basically reaches the battlefield exhausted so it's not really an option. So basically if we look at the requirements for half track they're quite complicated. It should be good on roads, it should have good cross country quality, it should also be able to tow various equipment for, in, for instance anti-tankings or artillery and at the same time you need quite a lot of space to put in your infantry. And the infantry should also be protected. And also you need to keep the weight low because, well, else you lose speed or the cross country capabilities down and, and all the other troubles. So as you can see, there are quite different requirements for this. And initially the Germans had went for a fully tracked vehicle, but then they realized the steering wasn't accurate enough for road driving. So they added a steering in front with, with regular tires. And it's quite interesting because those countries that most used mainly half tracks were Germany and the United States. Whereas the British used the universal carrier, often referred to as the Bren carrier. Now if you look at the vehicles you can see, okay, you have a fully tracked vehicle but it's not big enough. And we have half tracks which are quite big but they are not fully tracked. So to a certain degree the technology and all the requirements were not clear enough at this point. So we have a limited weight, large space and another thing is of course back then very few people had a driver's license and were equipped with this. So a driver was already a specialized person whereas a tanker was even more specialized. And if you put in the regular wheels in the front Basically, they, like the M2 or M3 half tracks of the Americans, they were designed so that a regular truck driver could use them. So this is not possible with a regular tank. It's a tracked vehicle at this point, a fully tracked vehicle. Another thing was you could adopt existing chassis from, from trucks. Now, for instance, in some instances, the Germans used trucks and replaced the, the back wheels with tracks. They were mostly used for transportation and were not armored, but still you could use existing equipment. And initially also if you look at Germany, the, the vehicle was called Mannschaftstransportwagen, personal transport vehicle. And later on it was changed to Schützenpanzerwagen, rifleman armored vehicle. So and also initially in 1940 it was still that the infantry the mechanized infantry should 
only be transported and fired outside of the vehicle, deployed, and later on in 1942 they should also fight from inside. I mean this was also possible due to the half tracks being open at the top. Which brings us to one to the next question basically, why were half tracks not really produced anymore after the second world war? They were still widely used because they were surplus vehicles, but basically nobody kept producing them. So this comes down basically to more experience and also to clearly defined roles and doctrine and everything. You should not forget, I mean, armored vehicles were not particularly new in the second world war, but basically back then the main aspects really developed and doctrine and tactics and operational aspects were really brought into stone and realized, okay, this works, this doesn't work. So after the second world war, you basically have armored personal carriers and later on you get infantry fighting vehicles. Now without going into too much detail here, armored personal carriers are basically a bit better armored than half tracks and they're enclosed at the top. So they're fully armored and fully tracked. Usually of course you have also wheeled vehicles. And the difference to the infantry fighting vehicle is basically that the infantry fighting vehicle has more firepower. So they have a bit more punch. They are not as, they are not well, well, more armored or something, but they have a bigger punch. Usually they have an anti-tank missile or a bigger gun on there so that they can potentially also fight against larger vehicles like tanks or pro provide more fire support. Now, why they were not produced anymore is basically, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. First of the advantage was you had an ease of training due to, you could put a regular truck driver in and you could drive with half track for the most part. This is not so much needed anymore because now after the second world war you have mostly more better education, more people have cars and everything. So you have already the basics. So initially you get someone in, like say in the 1930s, you usually have to provide him a, a driver's license or instructions. Now people come in and usually have this already. Additionally, you have more professionalized armies at certain points. So then you can also afford more training. Then another advantage was to reuse existing tech technology. So you had the trucks, you had some tracked vehicles and then you kind of made up the half tracks. But at this point, the technology stage, there's way more experience. Everybody knows what is working more or less and it's, it's less needed. Then another advantage was that the half trucks were rather fast on roads, but not as fast as wheeled vehicles usually. And they could accompany tanks into combat, but the cross, the cross country quality was higher of trucks, but lower of tanks usually. Which brings us to the disadvantages as well. One major disadvantage was it was open at the top. So against raving, artillery attacks, hand grenades at close range, everything, they were not well protected. So this was quite dangerous. At the same time, you could fight from the vehicle itself quite easily. Then they were weakly armored for the most part. And again, yeah, less cost country capability than a tank. Now the other aspect is of course, you have two systems kinda, you have this hybrid. So you have more, more problems with maintenance because you have, you, you have to, maintain the tires, you have to maintain the tracks and also for logistics. So there's a bit more going on in this department as well. In other ways, you could say that the half truck was basically a mermaid. And the problem with a mermaid is if you want to have a fish, you get a woman. If you want to have a woman, you get a fish. So in a way, the half trucks were a practical solution that was not perfect or ideal. And it was a stopgap. And after the second world, you realized, okay, we have these shortcomings and we need to fix this. And it's better to go with a fully tracked vehicle because better cross country capabilities. We also need armor at the top and other elements for which the, for which the half track was not suited anymore. And then we get the armored personal carrier. Now, thank you to Green Goblin Z for sending me two books from my own wish list, which I could use on this video. Thank you to Ross from the Tank Museum for inviting me to Tankfest. And also a big thank you to all my Patreons who made the trip to Tankfest possible. Thank you very much and see you next time.